So the next item on the agenda, and I hope you guys are looking forward for a panel discussion, um, which is done in partnership with ADNOC on sustainability beyond operations. So help me welcome the following esteemed guests. Iman Ustadi, project manager, Hailing Geisha program, ADNOC. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here. Uh, and then Mr. Mahmoud Al Mahmoud, uh, manager of engineering and technical services at NOCAS Processing, as well as Hassan Mohammed. Hello, Hassan. Manager, technology, strategy, and governance department at NOC Technology. Azza Raisi. Hello, Azza. Senior sustainability specialist at ADNOC. And finally, Shayman al -Mazrui. Hello. <laughs> Manager, Health and Environment at ADNOC Gas Processing. And moderating the session would be Zain Al-Hashimi, Senior Sustainability Specialist at ADNOC. Do you want a special hello? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right. Looking forward for the panel discussion. Hi everyone, uh, good afternoon and thank you for being here. It really does feel great that we have ADSW up and running um, with this uh, amazing physical presence. Um, I just wanted to take a second to kind of thank Mazda for this opportunity. You know, their continuous investment um, in youth, um, empower them, empowering them to be the sustainability leaders of tomorrow um, is actually a privilege. Um, it also is a privilege for us as ADNOC and the ADNOC Youth Committee to be collaborating with Mustar um, today. So I'm sure everyone talks about sustainability. It's Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, so we're super excited. Um, sustainability has become an important um, aspect and factor in business and operations strategies. And the way a company or an organization could perform socially and environmentally is just as, an, as important as it is when it performs financially. So today um, is going to be we're going to be kind of hosting a very super casual, you know, conversation led by um, our panelists, as he um, introduced, representing different sectors in Adna Group. Uh, we kind of want to spark interest to talk about what sustainability means beyond operations. So while um, he did have the pleasure of kind of introducing everyone, I just wanted to give a quick brief. So please do help me again welcome Ms. Shema. She was actually um, recognized by Abu Dhabi Sustainability Group. Um, as the Sustainability Manager of the Year in 2020 for her contributions in environmental conservation through water um, reduction programs. We have Ms. Azza, who is my colleague. We actually work in the same division. Ms. <laughs> um, um, Azza actually came from the Environmental Agency of Adobe and just joined, uh, recently joined ADNOC. Um, she's also part of the team leading, implementing the ADNOC sustainability strategy across the group. We have Mr. Hassan. Uh, he looks very young, he is part of the youth, <laughs> but he actually has 18 uh, years of experience in the field of innovation and technology, and he currently holds six degrees. Uh, and finally, Mr. Mahmoud, he has 19 years of experience in plant operations and engineering and expansion projects, and I hope that you find his insights today very useful. So, without further ado, I'm going to start with the questions, okay? so. The first question we wanted to kind of just give you guys an overview of what we as uh, youth kind of believe that clean energy transition is. So the question goes to Ms. Shema. Um, the oil and gas industry, as we already know, is transforming its portfolio into a cleaner energy uh, market. What do you think the youth's role is in this transition? Thank you, Zena, for the great question. Actually, our youth is our future. So. And for the future scenario, we expect our youth to take the role first in making the core business of oil and gas industry more resilient, for example, more resilient to climate change, and expanding also uh, to low carbon business, and in finding uh, operating models that will help to um, implement the low carbon business. So I believe these are three steps that will really help to decarbonize oil and gas industry and this is for our future. So thank you, Zena. Thank you, Shame. Okay, um, question to Mr. Hassan. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, so since um, you know, you're managing innovation technology, you're part of the ADNOC headquarters group, 
what do you think or how do you think the youth can leverage on this trend of innovation, technology, and digitalization to deliver us on sustainability holistically? Yeah. Before, before going to the you know, insights and, and giving the detail of how they can contribute, let's think of the innovation ecosystem as, as an operating framework that could you know, happen in each and every organization that you are working on, or even in the university or so on. So we start with our st UAE strategy. What is the, our leadership thinks of, of how we're gonna yani, implement our strategy when it comes to sustainability or innovation or, or, or certain um, subject. Then comes to the organizational uh, itself uh, strategy and then goes to the technology trends and based on the trends that you're gonna be implementing. For example, quantum computing, artificial intelligence and so on. And then you have two way of generating opportunity from internal and external. Internal, that means within our group that we are discussing together, we are bringing ideas, we are implementing those ideas. And from the external parties, which is university, individuals, we have uh, an, acceleration, uh, an acceleration program that brings a uh, startup into picture where we can see more opportunities, more uh, solutions into field, and then we can uh, implement sustainability. Uh, or initiative that contributes in, in sustainability. Given a, an example of S-curve, the fourth industrial revolution that happens, each S-curve, that means we are jumping from technology to, to the new era of uh, technology. Now, giving an example of shipment or logistics or uh, vessels when we are transporting our uh, oil and, and so on. So the first S-curve shows that people used to use old ships, like with, with wood and, and very old, small, that can take a few uh, uh, stuff that you can transfer from uh, location A to B. The second curve shows that bigger wood ship, a ship and, and, and taken more. And the uh, third, it, it is taken even bigger. Huge ship that takes massive uh, quantity of shipment. What do you think the fourth S would be as individuals? Are, you are representing the future of UAE. What do you think of the fourth S would be? No idea? Even myself, I couldn't imagine that. It is the 3D printing. You don't need to take shipment. You, need to, you don't need to take equipment from here to there or to the, uh, X countries and so on. You will be limiting yourself by sending certain coding to, to the uh, location B and they just print it out. And this is the uh, new era of technology. And this is how we are thinking as ad hoc when it comes to paper even. Sustainability starts from individual, then goes to the community, then goes to countries, and then impact on the globe. So start within yourselves. Like for example, myself, I don't print papers ever. Imagine that we go to the every single process and automate them, then how much paper we will be saving and how much trees we will be saving uh, across you know, the globe. This is kind of uh, a way that we contribute through technology to a new era of, uh, let's say, a uh, Thank operation. you, Mr. Hassan. Thank you. Actually, he was, uh, he was making an inside uh, comment because I ended up printing out my <laughs> moderator speaks, but thank you so much. Actually, that was very insightful. 3D printing uh, is definitely one of the future uh, roles for us to be partaking in. Um, okay, so the third question kind of goes to now, uh, Mr. Mahmoud. You know, you've been you've been in um, operation fields, engineering, very heavy work, oil and gas industry. It's it's very energy intensive. There's a lot of projects and expansion that's going on. What do you think um, would be, you know, the youth's role and how we can close the knowledge gap that's pertaining to climate change? Uh, thank you very much for the question, uh, Zena. Uh, it might be daunting at first when we, for our youth to think that how do I look at this gap of knowledge between sustainability and climate change. And it's best to put things into uh, context here, is that when we're talking about the link between climate change and sustainability, is looking at the complete system of how we are extracting that resource, converting it, and how does that contribute towards climate change. And what we want to achieve is a, a sustainable energy system. So for our youth to close that gap, 
they need to look into each step of that process, from the way we're extracting this resource, the way we are transforming it, converting it, shipping it, and consuming it. From there, when you have that understanding of these pieces, of that links of that chain, and identifying, you'll be able to identify opportunities in each link. And there, they can go and see how that link contributes towards climate change, and then identifies identify ways and opportunities to reduce it or completely eliminating it. Our youth here carry that momentum and that passion to help us achieve a sustainable energy future. Another example we can give here is that we're always deploying technologies, we're piloting new technologies towards sustainable operations. We're in a, in improved energy efficiencies, improved energy yields, product yield, and we're making our, that change towards that energy future and by diversifying our energy mix within the United Arab Emirates and ADNOC. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so last question kind of to, before we give you know, the floor to a couple of common questions, we're gonna ask uh, Ms. Azza. Outside the scope of operations, so we talked about innovation, we talked about you know, expansion projects, energy efficiency. What do you think um, the youth can do on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of you know, adapt, sustain adapt sustainability into their mindsets and their daily behavior? Thank you, Zaina. And I would like to also thank Hassan, Mahmoud, and Shayma to bring up the importance of sustainability in the oil and gas industry. But I would like to also point what Hassan have said, uh, which is very important, and we hear that a lot about the importance of the individual in sustainability and the actions that we take in, into daily, in our daily lifestyles. The problem is sometimes we overlook that and we just think of the big initiatives, the big goals that we have, but sometimes these small actions that we take on daily basis is actually what creates the, the snowball effect where it really supports the environment. And we should embed sustainable living in our daily lifestyle. I know maybe you've heard that a lot, but I think sometimes maybe today is time to start and maybe do one simple action where you could support the UAE and the world to where it's going. So what is sustainable living? living? We just want to reduce the demand on our natural resources. We need to do that to support the environment and also reduce one's carbon footprint. So let's think of these three simple ways and maybe if you thought of them in this way, that would help you like, think of ways or um, actions that you could take on your daily lifestyle to implement. So first, let's start to make more smart consumption choices. Once you go out, the choices that you take, let's always choose energy efficient devices, for instance. Even air conditioning, some of the devices are more energy efficient than others, and that would help reduce your carbon footprint. Maybe also try to shift from single-use items into reusable items. Tr try to like carry, try to choose carrying your reusable bags rather than just picking the bags from the shops. So this is one. And then going to the next point, let's change the way we do things. Let's start to normalize public transportation, carpooling to reduce our emissions. In addition to that, let's try to segregate waste, even if we don't have the bins ready outside. Why don't we segregate our waste and put that effort and send these to recycling companies or ask them to come pick up our waste? And in addition to that, we really need youth to be involved in environmental movements and try to volunteer more in supporting the environment. I think these things would really create an impact and sometimes just take one action and eventually it will support and create, create a greater impact. Thank you. Thank you, Nizam. And what? <laughs> make, make what? <laughs> what did you say? We couldn't hear you, Hassan. And make uh, Elon Musk more rich. Elon Musk more rich, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, we have uh, two more questions that we wanted to kind of just, you know, give an, uh, a quick overview on. Um, Mr. Mahmoud, Amr Shayma, or whichever one of you actually wants to contribute to this. What uh, bridges and partnerships do you think we need to build to strengthen our way for pathway for change? Thank you, uh, Dana. Uh, for me, I think the net zero carbon for our planets needs to be in more disciplined way. Uh, for example, by exploring, you know, 
uh, further aeons of uh, dis uh, disruption and innovation, identifying potential uh, opportunities uh, with the current energy markets. And uh, this really requires a partnership uh, with many sectors like um, technological innovation and scaling up um, economical instruments and also our uh, regulation and commitment. While uh, regulation and uh, you know reg uh, regulation and governance sets the um, you know the set points to act, and our technological innovation uh, will provide us uh, the action uh, to reduce our um, you know emissions. So I think this is uh, this will really um, help us. Sahmoud, do you want to add yes. something? Uh, thank you, Shaima, for that answer. And I'd like to build on that. The Areas of partnerships that we exi that exist today is between we have a lot of partnership between the public sector, private sector, industrial sector, and the energy sector, and the educational sector as well. So, by strengthening that even further, is that when we have our young youth here with fresh eyes and young minds could look at age-old problems or pain areas within these all these sectors, especially in the energy sector and they could come up with new ideas and new solutions, or even attempt to address these areas where the sector, uh, that for the energy sector is, is facing today. And that way, they become active participants in uh, being part of this society that is uh, climate conscious. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, last one, maybe uh, after Mr. Hassan and Aza kind of answer that, we would like to hear from you guys. Call for action for the youth. Any you know, specific words that you want to tell them as youth on what they should be doing, you know, especially now with COP26 just finished, COP28 coming up? So um, I know that COP26 have set very high ambitions for climate. In addition to that, the UAE have announced the net zero, which is which have put a huge responsibility on the country and for youth in specific, as the UAE have specifically sent, encouraged youth to be part of this action. And I believe they have already supported us, like they supported us through making our vision very clear, and we have enough uh, financial support to reach our goal. But we really need, as youth, to set the roadmap to achieve these goals try to be maybe more innovative, try to bring more ideas into the to the table. And most, of, most importantly, I believe that we need to be very agile to move towards like radical transformation. And on top of all that, I think we will never be able to achieve our goals unless we work as one and really be collaborative in this. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Hassan, any call for action to the youth? January 8th. 2001, there is a youth Emirati came to, was coming from school. It was an examination period. Suddenly he saw so many cars in the front of the house and he was celebrating that there is a gathering and, and suddenly he got the news that his father has died. From that day onward, he was failing in every single year till he reached to the 12th grade. In 12th grade, he failed for good. Yani, there is no way to go back. He lost the year already. It was, a, let's say, a slap to wake up. And he decided to go away, uh, to go abroad and study and do his uh, higher education. Because in UK, they used to accept 11th grade to continue the uh, university. So he left. He went and took almost two, degree, two degrees from UK, and he came back again, and he took the high school, and he went back again abroad. He took another from Oxford, and master from British University, and end up being one of the best employees in Dubai, and uh, Dubai Excellence Award. And after that, he started contributing in the, let's say, sustainability, health and safety, and bringing more uh, innovative ideas. He ended up with seven patents created by himself and his team. And today he's very proud to share that experience with you, to, yani, sitting with you here now. And my message, if that youth Emirati could have done all, all of that despite the 
devastated year or decades that happened to him, you can all do it. There is no question. We have the skills, we have the knowledge, we have the youth, and let's go and do it. This is the only message that I can give. Real example. من أراد أن يترك أثرا في ميدان هذا الوطن في صفحات هذا الوطن في ميدان أمامه. Our leaders gave us no option. So just go and do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hassan. Thank you. I want to open up the floor if anyone has any questions. Yeah? Are you anyone interested in Adnok and the oil and gas industry? We have a booth. <laughs> All right. If no one has any questions, thank you so much. Honestly, guys, thank you.